like you learned from previous. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone showed me some preview cards from the sequel to Rambo, because I had told him this story. And he kept the card, and they said, one of the cards said, it was written in a very scrawny hand, and it, it said, uh, what did you like about this movie? And the guy wrote, more deep. This needs more D. He spelled it D E E T H. He couldn't even spell death. You know, he wanted more D. You know, it's not, you don't make these films for brain surgeons. If we had to make these pictures for brain surgeons, I, would, I wouldn't be up here. Are there, is there any other? There's one last question here this gentleman's got yes, to ask. This, the, the question is about ambiguity, the, the ambiguity, ambivalence in the, in the endings that, that you find. Is that something you look for? What is that? The you? works of art that I most admire are, um, whether it's painting or film or whatever, are works that ask questions but don't provide answers. Since I don't know any answers, I don't know the ultimate answers to the, any of the ultimate questions, I find the quest more interesting than attempting to provoke, to stick on a happy ending. You know, Bill Peterson's character gets killed until they're going to die in L.A. That's a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, although we did shoot another ending we did, where he didn't die. Shit canned it. But <laughs> it's very interesting, what, what your question, because uh, I remember reading The Confessions of St. Augustine and written in the 4th century. And St. Augustine described how as a young man, he was addicted to the theater. And he wondered why, because he said, going to the theater, why do we go to the theater? He said, what we go to the theater to see is people in grievous situations, having a trouble and pain and grief, and there's nothing we can do about it, we can't go up there and help these characters out of their predicaments, but we seem to enjoy viewing their problems, their grief and their pain. And, and he said, and if the actor doesn't provide that, uh, and if the audience doesn't uh, is, get a vicarious thrill from the pain that these characters go through, they leave the theater angrily, and they're not happy because there are no ultimate answers to life's problems. And so I, he, he felt that perhaps people go to the theater then to live vicariously, to, to every one of us is in some kind of pain, whether it's physical, moral, mental, whatever. We, we all live in pain at all times. And they, according to Augustine, there's a kind of... <coughs> Um, uh, relief that's given to the audience by seeing how someone else goes through this. But there aren't, and in the classic theater that he was talking about, there were no answers to anything. <coughs> Plays like Oedipus Rex, you know, the great Greek tragedies, whatever, Orestes, uh, you know, uh, uh, there, there are no answers. And so, I, I don't feel there are any ultimate answers, only great questions. And so all of the films I've made have mostly to do with the thin line between good and evil that's in everyone. You know, the characters that they play, that these guys play. I mean, here's the, the lead in the film you just saw is a New York detective. And he's a womanizer, he's a racist, and the drug smuggler is a, is a gentleman. He, he dresses well, he's a gourmet, he has a young wife that he loves very much. And, you know, I, I, I sort of emphasize that to emphasize the thin line that is in all of us, of good and evil, and the constant struggle uh, for our better nature to, to win out. But often it doesn't. 
I mean, I've had people tell me that they think that the exorcist wins out, and the devil wins out at the end of the exorcist. It was never my intention. At the same time, the exorcist, which was based on an actual case in 1949 in Cottage Park, Maryland, one of three cases in the 20th century that the church authenticated, even after that original exorcism was performed, the church never acknowledged that it was an actual case of possession. Uh, they, and they don't discuss it. And, and I read the diaries of the priests and the doctors and nurses who were involved and there are no answers. There are no answers to that. I happen to know that in that case, it was a young man, uh, not a 13-year-old girl. It was a young 14-year-old boy in Cottage Park. And we've sort of kept tabs on him. I, I will never use his name. But um, there was an exorcism before. Everything that's in the exorcist, if you come to mind, happened in the actual case. Everything. And this boy, when the exorcism was finished, has had no memory of what happened to him at that time. He and I are the same age. And about uh, five years ago, he retired from NASA. Wow. And with, still has no memory. The, the, the Archdiocese in Washington keeps close tabs on him. So basically, I think instead of saying ambiguity, my philosophy of filmmaking is it's a line spoken by Hamlet to his friend Horatio, where he says, there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy, Horatio. And that's how I feel about life and art. Well, Bill, even if there are no answers, there's no question. You know, it's a pleasure to live through the torments of the characters you guys create and have. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.